I'm Lexi. I'm in the U.S. And I wanted to talk a bit about something really important today. Today is International Food Waste and Loss Awareness Day. So, we all throw food away. And I like to think that most of us aren't happy with the fact that we throw food away. But it does happen. And we all can be a little better at it. In America, approximately 25% of the food in your average household gets thrown out. So, say that you're spending $100 at the grocery store in a week. 25 of that's going right in the garbage. You're never eating it. You're never getting any use out of that. What could you do with that $25? So, that in itself should be a reason for everybody to pay a little bit more attention to food waste and to try to do just a little bit better. One way that we can do better is to be aware of the differences between sell-by, use-by, and best-by dates. I know people that are going to throw away something if it passes its sell-by date or its best-by date, but sell-by just means that it needs to be out of the store by that point, and then you get a reasonable amount of time to consume it before it's not good at that point. Best Buy is a quality thing, like raisins. What an odd example for me to pick. Um, dried fruit of any kind. Dried fruit has an incredibly long shelf life, but it starts to dry out even more and become less appealing. Therefore, it's best before this point, but it's definitely still good and has value after that. The only one that you really want to, and I don't even want to say trash blindly because... Use common sense here. If the milk still smells fine, the milk is drinkable. But the only one that you really want to think about before you just take a bite of something is the use-by date. But, like I said, if you keep your refrigerator really cold, if for some reason you haven't opened that container of milk yet, there's a chance that it's going to be good for a few more days. So give it that good old sniff test. Something else that can seem like a no-brainer for reducing food waste is proper food storage. That can include um, making sure like the newer canned goods are put in the back of the shelves so that you're using the things that are a bit older first, or making sure that produce is stored in the proper way in your refrigerator. Like onions really shouldn't be in the refrigerator before they've been cut. You should keep those in the pantry where they've got some airflow, and you want it cool but not hot. Same thing with potatoes. So do a little bit of research on the kind of produce that you tend to buy and see how that is best stored. I've seen people on YouTube that can keep carrots in their fridge for a couple of months because they, they take them out of the bag they come in and I think they wrap them in paper towels and then put them in open Ziplocs. I could be wrong on this. I don't buy a ton of raw carrots. But um, you can get a lot of extra time out of your produce simply by storing it properly. Another thing that I'm actually really good at and I enjoy doing is repurposing leftovers. Not even necessarily eating leftovers because I hate leftovers and I know, I've said it before, I'm weird. There's plenty of people out there that do eat leftovers and that's good too. Eat those leftovers, don't waste that food. But because I don't like leftovers, the best way for me to deal with that is to repurpose them. So I love doing things like roasting a whole chicken and then that night we'll have chicken and vegetables and potatoes for dinner. And then the next night I will make a chicken pot pie or make chicken noodle soup 
or make chicken salad sandwiches, which is a different thing than a chicken salad sandwich in the UK. Um, but there's a lot of different things I can turn that chicken into. Enchiladas, burrito bowls, all kinds of stuff. It's the most fun game for me at Thanksgiving or Christmas to bring home this mountain of leftovers and turn them into like seven different dishes over the next week and know in my head that every single solitary bit of that got eaten. And then another thing that should be pretty apparent is only buy what you know you can use, what you know you're gonna use. I have this habit of, I go to the store and I'm like, oh, avocados look good. I wouldn't mind putting an avocado in this or making burrito bowls with avocado in them this week. I'm gonna buy an avocado. And then that avocado gets put in my fridge and sits there and sits there. And those burrito bowls that I was gonna make, well, they get pushed off because I'm too busy or I feel like eating something else or, I mean, we all know life happens, but they get pushed off long enough that that avocado goes bad and probably that happens to 50% of the avocados I buy. I am not proud of this fact. I strive to do better. The last time I looked at avocados and went, yeah, that would be good. I, I, I purposely went, no, I'm going to buy it and it's going to sit there and it's going to rot and I'm never going to use it. So know yourself, know your cooking and your eating habits and that of your family and just don't buy things that you're not likely going to use. If you want it bad enough when the time comes, run out and get it then. And I realize that might not be feasible for everybody, but is it not having avocado on that burrito bowl just a little bit better than spending a dollar, a dollar and a half on an avocado that you now have in your pocket and that avocado is now in the trash? I, I, I think it's a little better. So quite literally, every time you don't have to throw food away, it's putting money back in your pocket. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't need that? If you don't need that, I envy you. And then there's the environmental impact. Every piece of food that you throw away ends up in a landfill and emits gases, acid rots that just isn't good for the planet. Now, composting is a little bit different because it's got oxygen. Um, composting is designed so that oxygen can still get at things and you end up with a, not even just a usable product, but a valued product that brings richness and value to the soil. So if you, if you are in a location that allows composting, I know some neighborhoods don't, give that a shot. That's a way to get some value still out of some of the food that you're not able to consume. And if we're not throwing away so much food, then the excess food can go where it's needed. Because there's so many people in this country, in this world, that don't have access to food. And maybe it's not something that you or I can really do a lot about, we can't take a truckload of food and drive it across the country to where it's needed, but we can stop throwing things away so that they are there for the people that can redistribute it to places where it's needed. And most importantly, don't think you have to be perfect at this. Don't think you have to be a zero food waste household. Even small changes are gonna help, both in the world and in your wallet. So do what you can, even if the very first thing that you do is today. Be aware if you're throwing away food. Be aware of the money and the resources that are going to waste. Every little bit is going to come together to count for something. Like I said, I'm not necessarily great at this, but I'm aware of 
I'm aware of it. And I want to do better. And if you want some more ideas, check out the hashtag food not waste, because I've invited a bunch of other YouTubers to jump on this bandwagon. So let's see if they put some more ideas out there for all of you. There's one more big thing that I wanted to talk about as far as not wasting food, and that's using parts of the food that you might not necessarily think about using. Uh, when you peel potatoes, potato skins can be tossed in a little bit of oil and thrown in the air fryer and you've got chips. Um, vegetable scraps can go in your freezer and later be used to make uh, chicken broth or beef stock. There's lots of foods that have plenty of edible parts that we don't use. And that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make something called scrap apple jelly. So quite literally, taking the scraps of apples from when you make pies or applesauce or your kids don't like the peels on the apples, what have you. I collect those pieces. And I've got a gallon Ziploc bag in my freezer where I keep apple cores, apple peels, and any kind of bruised spots that I cut out. And you can take that bag of literal scraps that would go in the garbage and make something that you and your family and your friends can enjoy. So let's go in the house and I will show you how it's done. Okay, to make scrap apple jelly, the first thing you need is apple scraps. This is about a one gallon Ziploc bag full. Then you're gonna add five cups of water to this and as usual when I forget to do the conversions ahead of time they will be here somewhere and down in the description and then we're gonna add I know this bit is scary we're gonna add seven cups of sugar Now you need to put this on the stove, bring it up to a boil, and let it boil for 15 minutes. Then I'll show you what to do next. Now that our mixture has simmered for 15 minutes and gotten all of that apple-y goodness out of the apples, we are gonna strain out these apple pieces so that we have a nice, smooth jelly. Throw away these apple bits and then let's put this syrup back into the pot. This goes back on the stove, and then you're gonna stir in one box of pectin and bring this back up to a rolling boil for at least two minutes. After that, you're ready to put it into containers and put it in your fridge to consume within the next week or two. Or if you are familiar with water bath canning, which I'm not gonna get into here, you could put this through the canning process and have jelly for the next while. So I'm gonna finish up with this and I will see you when it's time to try it. Okay, so I needed to pop in here for a minute and say something. Uh, we're all human and I am far from perfect. I was doing this recipe by memory and this really goes to show Anytime you're doing something, you need to have the recipe in front of you, especially if it has to do with food preservation. I got the order of some of the steps wrong, and canning is as much of a science as it is an art. And I'm not a scientist. I don't even pretend to play one on YouTube. So I don't know all the ins and outs of what makes something safe or what might make something not safe. So because of that, I didn't want to show you me doing something wrong on camera. 
I could have just played this off with the magic of YouTube and whatever, but we all make mistakes, right? So if you want to can this recipe and preserve it in a shelf stable manner, please follow the directions that I'm going to put down in the description below, not the directions that you saw me do in the video. Now I did get all of the amounts correct, but I got the procedure wrong. So if you're not gonna can it, well, I'd rather not let you get into a bad habit. Still follow the directions that you're supposed to. But as far as food waste goes, my product did gel all right. So it's able to be eaten, but it's not able to be preserved. So the things that I can do with it, since this is a video all about food waste, I can put it in the freezer and save it that way, or I can pass it out to friends and family to be used in a short time frame in the next week or two. And that's probably what I'm going to do with most of it. But the real things to learn from this is keep your recipe in front of you. And it's really important to follow directions and a recipe when you're canning. If you don't, you can actually make somebody really sick and nobody wants that, right? But if something does go wrong, be flexible in your thinking. Can you freeze it? Can you give it away? Can you repurpose it? What can you do with this item so that it can still be used without being stored in the way that you had originally had in mind? But just to kind of wrap up, I'm human, I goofed, keep that recipe in front of you, and if you're gonna can, always follow safe and tested recipes from a trusted source. Let's go back to me in the past now, giving the jelly a try. Okay, this is an older jar I had, which is why it's completely set. They do take a while, sometimes up to a week to set properly. So if yours is a little runny, don't worry about it. And you know, if it doesn't firm up, just use it as ice cream topping or pancakes. That'd be good too. But as a nice firm jelly, you can spread this on toast or on sandwiches or however you would consume jelly normally. It holds its shape just like any store-bought jelly. Mmm. Tastes of apple pie. Nice fresh apples. And that's without even adding cinnamon to this one. You can put some cinnamon or nutmeg or ginger into this just to up the flavor profile a little bit. But today I just wanted to do your basic apple jelly. And the fresh apples really come through in this. I don't know about you, but I go through a lot of apples in a year. So I will take those cores and those peels, and if I don't want to make a batch of jelly right away, or if I don't have enough to make a batch of jelly, I'll just put them in a Ziploc and put them in the freezer for when I do have enough or have the time to deal with it. I end up giving away a lot of these as gifts just because I have so many, but people always really seem to like them. And I love the fact that I am making usable food out of something that would otherwise go in the garbage. Do you have any ideas for parts of the food you're not currently using that you could use? Have you ever heard of some things that maybe you wanted to try? Today's the day to look into that. Or maybe today's just the day to start putting those apple cores in the freezer. Either way, you have any questions? You have any thoughts? Let's have a conversation. Let me know down below. And as always, I'll see you next time.